This is my third video lesson for Unit 7. In this lesson, we'll be comparing and contrasting the heating and cooling curves. Go to page 9 in the class packet. For motivation, for chemical bonds and intramolecular forces, do we describe them with potential or kinetic energy? These attractions are a form of potential energy. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I will be able to compare and contrast heating and cooling curves. Form will be number three, which will be a junior pod based on this lesson. The quiz will be on PowerPoints one, two, and three. Imagine the chemical bond and intramolecular force is a spring vibrating back and forth, as you can see here in this GIF. This graph should look familiar to you. On the y-axis is the potential energy. So the lower it is, the more stable it is. The higher the potential energy, the more unstable it is. The x-axis represents the bond length or the distance between the two atoms. When the attraction is formed, does potential energy increase or decrease? And why? Remember, Barth breaking exhort releases form. When you form an attraction, you release energy. Therefore, the potential energy will decrease. When the potential energy decreases, it becomes more stable therefore is less likely or less potential to react. You can see this in this graph. As the atoms come closer to each other, the potential energy decreases because they're becoming attracted to one another. But as they get too close, the potential energy increases because of repulsion. The electron clouds of each atom repel one another. If the attraction is broken, does the potential energy increase or decrease and why? Remember, Breaking exhort releases form. It takes energy to break this attraction. Once you break the attraction, the particles will move away from each other. So as you can see from this graph, the potential energy increases. Because once the attraction is broken, it becomes more unstable. Therefore, it's more likely or more potential to react. So the potential energy increases. Learning check number one. The potential energy possessed by a molecule is dependent upon what? Pause the video and resume what's completed. The answer is choice three. Both is composition and the structure. Composition is referring to atoms or the elements. Structure is referring to the bonds. A heating curve shows what happens to a substance when heat is added to it at a constant rate. Most heating curves will look something like this. We will analyze each line segment of a heating curve. In every heating curve, the y-axis is temperature, and the x-axis can be either be time or heat added. Even though heat is added at a constant rate, notice that in some lines, the temperature is constant. We will discuss why that is. In this heating curve, the substance starts out in the solid phase. As we add heat at a constant rate, the temperature increases until you reach a phase change. This phase change is known as melting. During melting, two phases, solid and liquid, exist at the same time. Notice that the temperature is constant during melting. The energy that's being added at constant rate is being used to break the intramolecular forces rather than raise the temperature. Eventually, all the solid melts and becomes a liquid. This line segment only has the liquid phase. As heat is being added at a constant rate, the temperature is rising again. The particles in the liquid phase will move faster. Eventually, the substance in the liquid phase will enter a new phase change known as boiling. During boiling, there are two phases, liquid and gas, that exist at the same time. Heat is still being added at a constant rate during boiling. But as you notice, the temperature is remaining constant. Just like melting, the energy is being used to break the intramolecular forces. Eventually, the boiling will be complete and your substance will only be in the gas state. Since heat is still being added, the temperature will rise in the last line segment. The particles will move faster and faster as heat is being added. The melting point of the substance is the temperature in which melting occurs. If we look at the heating curve, That'll be at this line segment at this temperature. The boiling point will be the temperature in which the substance is boiling. 
that will be at the temperature of this line segment. From left to right, from point A to point F, it is endodermic because heat is being added at a constant rate. So the opposite direction will be exodermic in the heating curve. Learning check number two, what is the melting point of the sample and the total time required to completely melt the sample after it reaches its melting point? Pause the video and resume once completed. The first step is to label the heating curve. So this should be a solid, liquid, and gas. Melting is going from solid to liquid. So this is the melting phase. So the temperature in which melting occurs is the melting point, which is 50 degrees Celsius. The time it takes to melt the sample is 3 minutes, 5 minus 2. The answer is choice 1. Question 2. Why is the temperature of the phase change constant even though heat is being added at a constant rate? Assuming pressure is constant, if you recall, the energy added is being used to break the intramental forces instead of raising the temperature. Question 3. Are boiling point or melting point fixed constants for substances? No, because boiling point and melting point can vary based off the pressure. We will discuss why that's the case later on in the unit. Question 4. During which interval is there more than one phase of matter present? If you recall, in the heating curve, that's during a phase change. Interval BC and interval DE. Learning check number 3. The table shows the data collected by a student as heat was applied at a constant rate to a solid below its freezing point. What is the boiling point of the substance? Pause the video and resume once completed. According to the question, the substance starts out as a solid. We know during a phase change, the temperature is constant. So let's highlight that on the table. These are the phase change because the temperature is constant. Since we start out in the solid state, this must be melting. And this must be the liquid phase. And this must be boiling. So the answer is choice two. Question 5. Predict which intervals is kinetic energy increasing or constant? Temperature is related to the average kinetic energy. As kinetic energy increases, temperature will also increase. If we look at the heating curve, the temperature is increasing at intervals AB, CD, and EF. Therefore, kinetic energy will also increase at those intervals. Kinetic energy will be constant when temperature is constant. If we look at the heating curve, temperature is constant at intervals BC and DE. Question 6. Predict which intervals is potential energy increasing or constant. Potential energy increases during a phase change because the heat added is being used to break the intramolecular force. As stated in the beginning of the video, when attraction is broken, potential energy increases because it becomes more unstable. If we look at the heating curve, the phase change is during intervals BC and DE, so potential energy will increase during those intervals. Therefore, potential energy will be constant at every other interval because the intramolecular forces is intact. Another way you can think about it is the conservation of energy. In the heating curve, heat is being added at a constant rate. So if energy is being added and the kinetic energy is constant, then potential energy must increase. Or if kinetic energy is increasing, then potential energy must be constant. Learning check number four, which statement describes the energy of the particles in the sample during intervals DE? Pause the video and resume what's completed. Intervals DE is a flat line, it is a phase change. Therefore, potential energy will increase and the kinetic energy will remain the same. So the answer is choice three. A cooling curve is the opposite of a heating curve. It shows what happens to the substance when heat is removed at a constant rate. So we'll go over each interval of a cooling curve. The y-axis of a cooling curve is temperature, the x-axis can be heat removed or time. In a cooling curve, you start off with a gas. Since heat is removed at a constant rate, 
the temperature decreases over time. Eventually, the gas will begin to condense and a phase change would occur. This is known as condensation. During condensation, two phases exist at the same time, gas and liquid. Even though heat is being removed at a constant rate, the temperature remains constant because intramolecular forces are being formed. Once the condensation is complete, the substance will only be in a liquid state. The temperature will decrease as heat is being removed at a constant rate. Eventually, the liquid will begin to freeze. Freezing is a phase change. During freezing, two phases exist at the same time, liquid and solid. Just like condensation, during freezing, the temperature is remaining constant even though heat is being removed at a constant rate because intramolecular forces are forming. Once freezing is complete, the substance will be in a solid state, and the temperature will continue to decrease as heat is being removed. Condensation point is the same temperature as boiling point. Freezing point is the same temperature as melting point. From left to right, from point A to point F, it is exothermic because heat is being removed at a constant rate, so the opposite direction will be endothermic. Learning check number five, which graph best represents a change of phase from gas to a solid? Pause the video and resume once you complete it. So the graph must be a cooling curve, so the answer is choice one. Learning check number six, during which interval is the substance completely in the liquid phase? Pause the video and resume once complete it. The first step is to label the phases. A to B is a gas, C to D is a liquid, E to F is a solid. During the phase change, B and C, you have two phases, and D to E, you also have two phases. Since C, D only has one phase, which is liquid, the answer is choice three. Here's a summary table of what we discussed. If the slope is positive, then the temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy is increasing, and the potential energy is constant. In a flat slope, the temperature is constant, the kinetic energy is constant. Depending on whether you have a heating or cooling curve, a heating curve, the potential energy is increasing, and a cooling curve, the potential energy is decreasing. If your slope is negative, then the temperature is decreasing, your kinetic energy is decreasing, and your potential energy is constant. In a heating curve, you have two phase changes. In a cooling curve, you also have two phase changes. The main of the phase change in a heating curve is melting or fusion and boiling or vaporization. In a cooling curve, it is condensation and freezing. The slope of the curve during a phase change, that is a flat slope. The slope during a cooling curve during a phase change is also flat. The number of phases in the slope line is one, same with the cooling curve. The kinetic energy of a slope line in a heating curve is increasing. The kinetic energy of a slope line in a cooling curve is decreasing. In a heating curve, energy is absorbed, so it's endothermic. In a cooling curve, energy is released at a constant rate. It is exothermic. Sometimes on the regions, they'll ask you to draw a cooling curve given a heating curve or vice versa. All you have to do is draw a mirror image of the curve. So make sure that the line intervals are equals in length in the opposite directions. The amount of heat released in freezing is equal to the amount of heat absorbed in melting. The amount of heat released in condensation is equal to the amount of heat absorbed in boiling. Here's a summary. Here's a summary table of the heating curve. And here's a summary of the cooling curve. So this concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the Juniper homework and quiz.